However, shifting focus from South Asia now to Southeast Asia, 14 years after the tsunami that wreaked havoc in Indonesia and killed more than 200,000 people there, the country is now reliving, reliving the horror all over again. Now, Indonesia sits on the ring of fire. The archipelago has often borne the brunt of natural disasters. On Friday at about 6 p.m. local time, an earthquake of 7.5 magnitude struck Indonesia. The epicenter was Dongala, a town with a population of 300,000 people. Soon, a monstrous tsunami followed. Waves measuring up to 6 meters hit Palu, the capital city of Sulawesi. It swept everything that came in its way, from people to cars and boats. Now, five days since the horror unfolded, the situation on the ground is nothing short of a nightmare. The official death toll now stands at 1,234. Remember, it only takes into account the areas where rescue teams have been able to reach so far. Bodies of 34 students were found under a church in Sigi Biromanru outside Palu. The church was buried in a mudslide following Friday's 7.5 magnitude earthquake. The deceased were a part of a group of 86 students who were reported missing from a Bible camp. Neither the identity and age of the deceased nor the whereabouts of the other children are known. Meanwhile, a desperate search and rescue operation is underway in and around Palu. Though the official death toll stands at 844, local reports peg the numbers at anything between 900 and 1000. Three people have been pulled out alive from the ruins of a seven-story hotel that collapsed on Friday. Rescuers say that at least a dozen more people are still trapped there. Now, several roads continue to be blocked. Telecommunication systems have been affected. The airport has been damaged too. Some locals looted damaged shops in search of food, medicine and water in a desperate attempt at survival. Authorities have begun burning bodies in mass graves that have been dug across Palu in order to avoid the outbreak of disease. Some of the graves stretch up to 100 meters. Amidst all this chaos, at least 1,200 prisoners have escaped detention centers across the disaster hit areas. Right, and we spoke to Devianti Farids, a journalist based out of Jakarta, for the latest on this developing story. Listen in. Well, the Indonesia's Meteorological and Geophysics Agency um, said that um, there was a failure um, in the, um, the network of buoys that were basically uh, rendered useless. So that's basically something that was um, played a huge uh, part uh, in in creating uh, the the massive uh, you know number of of deaths. Um, the the tw a network of uh, 21 boys uh, across uh, the archipelago was, was also um, vandalized and some were stolen. Um, so many of the boys were also rendered useless as well. Um, the sensors, the, out of like 170 sensors, 
um, the the meteorological and geophysics agency had only had only money uh, to care for 70. So there was a lot of um, failure uh, on that on their part uh, because of lack of funds. Um, that was one of the things that was highlighted uh, by the agency, and they had admitted um, that they needed more funds and planned to increase uh, funds in the future.